guys, got to load that video for you today. Uh, this is just going to be a quick overview of the products and the stuff that I'm wearing. Um, this is typical of a full loadout. If I'm running a full loadout for my MP5, uh, sometimes I'll run just a play carrier or no battle belt. You know, things change, so this is just kind of like an, if I was wearing everything, this is what I'd be wearing. Uh, like I said, this is going to be an overview. Uh, I'm going to try not to go into too much depth of why I choose things. That'll be for another series of videos on each individual piece of gear. Uh, I'm going to talk about, in those videos, I'm going to talk about why I choose things, uh, you know, my theory behind those choices. Uh, but this is just going to be an overview of what I'm wearing. Uh, starting from the bottom, I've got high-tech boots. These are like $30 boots I found on Amazon, and they're really comfortable. Uh, I'm wearing jeans and a 5'11 sweatshirt, uh, which isn't all that unusual. I will wear that from time to time on the field. I like to wear jeans and civilian clothing. Uh, sometimes I'll wear 5'11 pants or woodland BDUs. Uh, I've also got an LBX Cayman combat top, combat shirt that I'll wear from time to time. But I'm usually wearing civilian clothing because it's comfortable. Uh, and I found that in airsoft, trying to hide is stupid because the ranges we shoot each other at is you're obviously visible no matter what camouflage you're wearing. Uh, my belt is a 511 Brocos battle belt by VTAC. Uh, this is a fusion belt with a uh, Raptor buckle. It's American made. It's similar to a Cobra buckle. It's just a little bit cheaper. Um, this is a Safari Land ALS holster. This is a high thigh rig rather than the low thigh rig. Uh, this has been modified by the previous owner. Um, this is for a Glock 17 with a TLR1 or an M Insight M3. Uh, I also I will run in Glock 17 with the TLR1 in it, but right now I have a WE MNP with a TLR1 replica, and it fits just fine. Uh, I like having this option. I can switch between the two pistols, whichever one I decide to run that day. Uh, this here is an MP5 hard shell mag holster. Uh, back here, this is a Condor uh, multicam GP pouch, uh, 4x2, I guess it is. Um, moving around to the other side, this is a standard, I don't know, Phantom Gear dump pouch. It rolls up, but I always leave it out. Uh, this is a 511 single SMG pouch, which I keep a backup MP5 mag in. Uh, this is a Condor double pistol mag pouch, which is probably going to get changed out pretty soon for either the STAC Kiwi or the LBX Kydex insert uh, pistol mag pouches. Uh, I also have this carabiner here. This is for holding gloves. Uh, I always use mechanics gloves. It's either the covert vent, the black gloves, or uh, multicam fast fit gloves. I love mechanics. I'll always wear them. Uh, I find that armor finger gloves are just too bulky, uh, and so I just I like standard mechanics. Uh, moving up to the play carrier. This is set up for an MP5. This is a first spear beat up play carrier. Uh, I got it on sale because they were getting rid of all the old stock. Uh, this is Ranger Green and a Medium, and I really love the color and just the fit of it. Uh, it's pretty standard looking, but that's, you know, whatever. Uh, so, my primary is, most of the time, an SMP MP5. This is a classic army lower, and the rest is pretty much JG, which means this thing is super light. I mean, it's all plastic, and there's some weight in the gearbox, the gearbox shell on the SMP itself. Uh, but other than that, I mean... It's just a really big pistol, basically, and it's it's a lot of fun to run and gun with. Uh, right now, I have it set up for CQB, so it's got a tack light on it. Um, but I change the front end out all the time. It's all been changed, and stocks change. So, you know, just because it looks like this now doesn't mean it's going to look like this when I play with it tomorrow. Uh, it changes all the time, which is kind of fun. Uh, these are modular, too. M4s are like, oh, it's most modular. MP5s are modular, too. Uh, so, on the front, I'm running a Blue Force gear quad mp7 mag pouch obviously i'm not running mp7 mags i'm running mp5 mags fit just fine uh got a couple patches up here uh the mp5 is slung on a matrix one point bungee sling uh, this is routed up through the shoulder pads and these are actually the shoulder pads off of my tmc strand hog replica uh, i like them so much they're so thick and comfy and they also can fit a ton of stuff through them so I've got that running, I've also got my airline running through the shoulder, and then I've also got my comms running through the shoulder, and I'll get to that later. Uh, this side I keep slick in case I'm running a pistol higher on my belt, because then I want to draw nice and easy. Uh, on the back is an A2 mini mat pack. You see my other videos on it, it's uh, a really nice pack for the money. Uh, I thought about getting a GMR pack, but I'm probably not going to. Uh, this is a Thunderbee or grenade holder uh, pouch. 
uh, I can't tell, I don't know, I think it's Phantom Gear, it's whatever Evike's house brand is. And I keep a Bao Baofeng UV5R radio, it's got an aftermarket antenna. And that's where I have my comm set up run. Uh, I don't like headsets, they just kind of get in the way. And like I said before, if I'm going to be stealthy, I'm going to turn my radio off. Just because it's going to be quieter. Uh, whatever. Uh, this is a 511 admin pouch. Uh, just got a Sharpie chem light pocket knife and a notebook. The notebook is great for Milsa Mops where you got to write down Intel or it's also great because I keep a list of the frequency and channel codes for the radio in there so if someone doesn't know what channel or what frequency is what uh, I can just quick reference that and we're good to go. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it for my play carrier. Moving on to my head, this is a Protec A Bravo half shell in black. Uh, I went with a Protec helmet. I had an Emerson Fast helmet before, but it was just too small for my head. So I went for a Protec, which I could get a larger size in. So this is a real, real helmet. I mean, it's not ballistic rated, but it is bump rated. Uh, these arc rails and the NVG shroud are off my old helmet. I uh, just drilled holes and put it on there. Uh, so I get some functionality out of this. Uh, the half shell means it's got this cutout for ear stuff, ear pro, or comms. Uh, I haven't gotten my Howard Light Impact headsets to fit right in it, so I just don't run them. Uh, but I bought it with the theory that, you know, if I needed the hole, I had it. Uh, this is a GoPro Hero, just a cheap one, uh, which I film all my gameplay on. Uh, this GoPro gets charged by this battery pack. This is not a cell phone. <laughs> even though everyone always asks if it's a cell phone. This is a portable battery charger, portable battery pack for charging a phone or something like that. Uh, and what it, it's got a built-in solar panel. So when you're in the sunlight, this battery charges itself. So I basically got constant power going to this camera. It's never gonna die on me. Uh, I've got, so this one is for the camera. This is also for a fan. I've got a little fan in here that helps just clear out the exhaust, or exhaust my helmet. And that's all wired up to this box back here, uh, which also has a 9-volt battery. It's got two switches, one for the fan, and then one for this, uh, my lights. These lights were uh, the brainchild of Dave, who's one of the field owners at Zulu24. Uh, and what it is, it allows for red light, so when you're dead, you've got a red light, and you can see it from the back, the side, and the front. So you've got basically full full coverage deadlight, which is great for uh, milsim and mount facilities. You're going to be in the dark a lot of the time, so I don't. Know. It's just something cool and helpful to have. Uh, I got a couple pack patches back here, some Velcro. Uh, for eye protection, I'll usually wear ESS Profile, some kind of ESS goggle. I've got NVG and Slackjack and all that. Uh, I need to wear goggles because I've got prescription glasses and I need something that fits over it. Uh, I also like goggles just because it's got more protection for the soft tissue right under your eyes, which could really hurt if you shot there. Uh, for mouth protection, I'll usually wear a mouth guard, an athletic mouth guard. Um, I used to wear a mesh mask, and then I cut it down so that I could get a better cheek weld on my stock, uh, but then it looked kind of funny. It was just like this. Uh, so I scrapped that. I'm in the process of modifying another mask to use, uh, but it's not really ready yet, so it's not in this video. And that's pretty much it. So. Uh, stay tuned, I'm going to get those videos cranked out for each individual piece of gear and talk about the theory and why I do that. Uh, but I wanted to give you this full loadout video. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have that AK loadout coming up right now, so check it out.